injuries, if you're feeling sick, if you're feeling tired, if you've got any injuries, any kind of um, aches or pains, anything that just doesn't feel right, you're very welcome to obviously do the flow, but please be mindful of your own bodies. Be kind to yourselves. Don't be stupid. If something hurts, just pull yourself out of that stretch. Take a break, take a drink of water, take your child's pose and just rejoin us whenever you want. Um, yeah. If you are pregnant, um, you're also very welcome to take the flow. Just please make sure you've got a cushion handy just to pop underneath your head and your shoulders if we're lying supine. If you're past the first trimester, no lying on your belly. So things like cobra you want to avoid and no twists through the spine because it restricts the airflow to the fetus. Um, the things that I would say to you in my physical class as well is that you guys know your body better than anyone else. No one can tell you how you feel. If something doesn't feel right, just take a, take a break. Do as much or as little of the flow as you would like. Um, we're going to do a big, juicy, dynamic vinyasa flow tonight, a full body thing. We're just going to work every single little part of our body. We're going to stretch ourselves out. We're going to get nice and deep into all those areas, all the nooks and crannies in our body. I just thought we'd do a big power flow because we've been focusing on individual points for the last two weeks. So let's just do a big full body one and get into every single little part of our bodies. So everybody coming onto your mats, you know by now we start seated, but if you are not happy starting seated, that's fine. Find wherever feels good for you to start. If you want to start lying down or standing, it's completely up to you. We're going to start with seated movement like we always do. So you will have to join us in a seated position at some point anyway. I just want you to shift your weight around on your mat and find your space. So look around you, make sure you've got enough physical space to actually do the flow. Make sure you're not going to knock over plants or smash into doors or windows um, and as well as your physical space what I want you to do is just kind of get into a good mental space as well so when we're inside for so long and our kind of work play and our entire lives is in our house I want you to just take this time and just make that nice mental space around you that's just for you so maybe you've been feeling a little bit frustrated or scared or sad or angry and all of those are really really valid feelings so just like we did last night we're going to take the same theme tonight and I want you guys to really feel those feelings so everything I just I don't want you to build anything up or like hide any of those feelings really let them flow through you as we move our bodies as we move our breath so bring yourself down onto your mat take your palms onto your knees and just Turn them up so they're facing up towards the sky. Drop those shoulders down. Make sure those sit bones are nice and even. Close your eyes. And let's take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Really feel that breath wash through you as though it's cleansing your organs. And exhale. Reverse the breath and navel to spine. And again, inhale. And exhale. And with every inhale, always teaching our bodies to breathe that little bit deeper, using the full capacity of your lungs. And as you exhale, really draw that navel in, expel every last drop of air from your lungs. And maybe pause for a second at the top of your breath before you exhale. And I like to visualize my lungs as a glass. We fill them with water all the way to the top. And as you exhale, you empty that glass. And on your inhale, try lengthen up through that spine lifting yourself up but keeping yourself grounded and draw those shoulders down away from the ears creating space for your neck to grow long we just check in with our tension points so drawing those shoulders down Unlocking the jaw, making sure it's soft. 
checking our back teeth aren't touching. Drop the tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. And maybe you have your mouth open a tiny little bit. Checking that you're not frowning or holding any tension in your facial features. When we tend to hold on to stress in really subtle ways. So just checking in with our bodies and making sure that we're just releasing those small tension points. Noticing the difference. And let's start to tune out all of our distractions, thoughts and worries, any wandering feelings that we don't want. So remember, we are going to feel everything that we want to feel, allow it to flow through you. But anything wandering that you just don't want in your mind, let's take that imaginary broom and start to sweep the mind clear of all that clutter, pushing it out and leaving the room bare and empty and clean and allowing your breath to just flow through. And exhale. When we take this time for us, forgetting everything we did before or need to do after, this is your time. And just gently take your chin towards your shoulder. It doesn't matter which one. And you're going to slowly start to roll your head across to the other shoulder. And feel free to keep your eyes closed if you'd like to. And rolling it back again. And rolling all the way around. Full circle of your neck. And back the other way. Slowly and gently wake up the body. Bring yourself back to center and just roll the shoulders a couple of times for them up towards your ears, down your spine, circling them like you've got a pen on your shoulder blades and you're trying to draw a picture. Up to your ears, down your spine, nice and deep. And then bring your palms in front of you and come into an all fours position on your mat, stacking your joints. Push down down through your palms and your knees and the tops of your feet, pushing into the outside of your little fingers and your palm. Draw that navel in and I just want you to flatten your back. So imagining if I put a hot cup of tea on your back, you wouldn't spill it. So you want to try and avoid just dipping the spine at this point. We want that nice solid spine and take a deep inhale here. And when you exhale, I want you to breathe out like you're fogging up a mirror. Like a dragon breathing out smoke, inhale. And this time we're going to keep our mouth closed so we fog up in the back of our throat. Might sound a little bit like you're snoring. This is your ujjayi breath. Inhale. Really feel that heat in the back of your throat. Inhale. Keep pushing down here as you breathe. Imagining that you're trying to lift yourself up off the mat, pushing down through the knees. And maybe you want to tuck those feet over under and just gently lift those knees about five centimeters off the mat. Keep that spine flattened, that core nice and engaged, your trunk nice and solid. And just breathe here, inhale, pushing back into your heels, lifting those knees. It's okay if you want to stay in your all fours position, but if you would like to lift those knees, make sure that you're nice and engaged. Breathing here, inhale. And exhale. And one more time. Gently drop those knees, untuck the feet, drop your navel down towards the floor, hollow out the lower back and gaze up towards the sky in your calvary. As you exhale, curving the spine, doming the shoulders, crown of the head towards the floor, like a scared cat. And again, inhale, mobilizing your spine with your cat cow here. And as always, if you enjoy this movement, the up down of your cat cow, then feel free to continue here. If you would like to freestyle and get a little weird, then please feel free. Get into your hips, get into your arms, your neck, your shoulders. 
you can sit all the way back in your child's pose you can bring yourself forward into your cobra do whatever feels good get weird get as crazy as you like no one can see you it's all good that's one of the sweet things about practicing at home you really can do whatever you want really get into any nook and cranny in your body that you feel like needs waking up this is your moment to just shake out any of those excess little bits of tension before we really really start moving our bodies give yourself that wiggle make sure that every little bit of you is getting involved give me one more deep breath here gently bring yourself back into your all fours position tuck that right toe under and you're going to kick that leg up behind you so right knee is bent flexing the right foot take a nice deep inhale here and maybe you want to trickle those left fingers out in front keeping that spine nice and flat and maybe you're happy here and maybe you want to lift that left arm so we're doing opposite arm opposite leg and maybe you're happy here and maybe you want to bring that left hand all the way back to take hold of your right foot and kick that right foot into your left hand giving yourself a nice deep stretch through the spine and the shoulders gaze straight ahead find your drishti a place to rest your gaze and breathe inhale whichever version you're doing lovely just staying here inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale well done lovely everybody give me one more breath whichever version you're in you're going to let go bring both hands down but keep the leg up the foot flex the knee bent tuck that left toe under keep the hands nice and evenly distributing the weight and then push yourself up into your three-legged dog keeping that knee bent and the foot flexed really nice take a deep breath here if you want to you can stay here if you'd like to Go a little bit further. We're going to straighten that leg out behind us into our three-legged dog, pushing down through the palms. Make sure that weight is evenly distributed. If you want to go further still, bend that right knee, open up the hip, and if you want to, you can walk the whole way over into your wild thing pose. If it's in your practice, if you have the space, come up in the ball of your right foot. Make sure those hips are nice and high. Bend through the back. You're leaning. You're leaning the weight onto the left arm and reaching back with that right. Try and keep that neck long and breathe here. Five, four, three, two, whichever version you're in. You're going to bring yourself all the way back around into your three-legged dog with the bent knee and the foot flex. Take a nice deep breath here. Inhale. We're going to draw that knee in towards the chest. Come forward. Exhale, push back into your three-legged dog. And inhale, bring that knee now to the outside of the right elbow. Exhale, three-legged dog. Lovely. Inhale, bring that knee across to the opposite elbow. And back to your three-legged dog. So you get the picture here. We're going to go middle, right elbow, opposite elbow. Let's go again. To the middle. Push back, three-legged dog. To the right elbow. Push back, three-legged dog. Well done, lovely. And to the opposite elbow. And push back, three-legged dog. You can keep your knee bent if you want to. I'm just choosing to straighten the leg. We're going to go again to the center. Push back, lovely. Well done. To the right. Push back, three-legged. Lovely. And to the opposite. Push back, three-legged dog. Let's go one more time to the center. Well done. Push back, three-legged dog to the outside of the right push back three-legged dog well done everybody last time to the opposite elbow gorgeous lovely three-legged dog and then just drop both feet down into your downward facing dog push down through the palms give yourself a little wiggle here if you want to you can give yourself a little twist through the hips you can bring that left foot in front of the right so you're twisting over and then bring that left foot back and take the right foot to behind the left. Twist the hips. Bring yourself back to centre. Drop those knees down. Back into your all fours position. Lovely. Well done. And let's do the other side. Keep that left foot under. Bring that left leg out behind you. Knee bent. Left foot nice and flex. So maybe you're happy here. 
And maybe you want to trickle those right fingers out. And maybe you want to go further, lift the right arm in your opposite leg to opposite arm balance, keeping that core nice and engaged in the back flat here. Maybe you want to go further, bring that right arm behind, take hold of the left foot and kick that left foot into your right hand. Give yourself that nice deep stretch through the spine and the shoulders. Find a drishti, a place to rest your gaze and breathe. Inhale. And exhale and try not to fall out of this balance. And whichever version you're in, give me five, four, three, two, and one. Keep that foot up and bring both hands down. So left foot flexed, left, left, left knee bent. Pushing down through your palms, tuck that right toe on the push up, three legged dog with the knee bent. So maybe you're happy here. Make sure that weight is evenly distributed between the hands. You're rotating the shoulders outwards. And if you want to, you can straighten that leg up towards the sky. And if you want to, you can open that hip and bring yourself all the way over into your wild thing pose. Make sure you're up on the ball of your left foot, reaching back with that left arm. Give yourself that nice deep stretch, lifting those hips high, bend through the back. Inhale. And exhale. Give me five, whichever version you're in. Three, two, I just missed out four, I obviously can't count. And one, gently bring yourself back into your three legged dog. And are you guys ready? You're going to swoop that left knee forward to meet the middle and back. And then to the left elbow. And back to your three-legged. And to the opposite. And back. Well done. And to the center. And three-legged dog. Well done. And to the left. Three-legged dog. And to the opposite elbow. Three-legged dog. We're going to work that core. And back to center. Three-legged dog. And to the left. Three-legged. And to the opposite. Three-legged dog, let's go for one more center. Three-legged dog, and to the left. Three-legged dog, well done, opposite elbow. Three-legged dog, bring both feet down onto the mat, into your downward facing dog. Pushing down through those palms. If you need to bend your knees here, then by all means do. If that means that you have a flatter back, please do bend the knees. And we're just gonna give ourselves that little hip twist here. So you're going to take that left foot to the outside of, outside of the right and just gently gaze underneath your left armpit. So your hip opening those hips, just giving yourself a little stretch. And back again, left foot back in place. Right foot's going to come behind the left and you're just going to gaze underneath the right armpit. Deep breath back to centre. Push down through the palms here. So back into your downward dog. So this is, excuse me one second. Just gonna tuck that underneath there. So this is your first proper downward dog. So you're drawing your heels down towards the mat, but if they don't reach the mat, don't worry about it. And again, if you need to bend the knees, it's much better to have bent knees than a curve in the spine. I bend the knees in my downward dog quite often just because I do have quite a bendy back. So you're gonna push down into the outside of your little fingers and your palms. Gently turn those elbows out and rotate the shoulders outwards. Gazing between your legs or at your belly button and draw that navel in towards the spine. And you really want a straight line from the tailbone all the way down to your arms, all the way down to your fingertips. Take a deep breath here and just hold this down dog. So your down dog is really your powerhouse asana. We're re-energizing and rejuvenating the entire body. We're stretching our arches, our hands, our arms, our shoulders, our spine, our calves, our hamstrings. And we're strengthening our legs, our arms, and our backs. Let's take a nice deep inhale here. We're going to raise up on our heels, coming up on the balls of our feet. Try and keep that same position. Exhale, lower. So we're really only moving the feet, which is going to give us a nice deep stretch on the back of our legs and lift. So if you do get tight calves or hamstrings, this is a lovely one. And lowering down. And left. And lower. Well done. And give me three. Lifting up on the balls of your feet. Lift those heels. And draw the heels back down. Two. Well done. And lower. 
and one. Gorgeous, and drop forward into your high plank. Make sure those wrists are underneath the shoulders, core engaged, body in a nice straight line. Take a breath here. Start to drop those knees down towards the mat. And as you do, send that bum back towards the heels. Don't let the knees touch the mat. Send that bum up, downward dog. So it's kind of like a little circle, and we're gonna do that a few times. Drop forward into your high plank. Drop the knees, send the bum back towards the heels. Lifting up into your downward dog. And again, waving forward high plank. Drop the knees, send the bum back, downward facing. And again, drop forward into your high plank. Dropping the knees towards the mat, send the bum back towards the heels. Exhaling into your downward facing. Let's do two more. Drop forward into your plank. Make sure the body's in a nice straight line. Drop those knees, send the bum back towards the heels. Downward dog last time, high plank. Well done. Knees towards the ground, push back, downward facing. Well done, everybody. Take a nice deep breath here. You're gonna drop forward into your plank again, and this time, feel free to stay in your plank if you'd like to, but if you wanna go deeper, we're gonna come down into a forearm plank here. Engaging our core, so we're really gonna get into our shoulders and our abs here. And if you wanna go even deeper here, you can start to rock forward, find your edge, rock back. Rock forward on your toes and back. And forward and back. And give me five. Well done. Four. Try and keep engaged. Three, two, and one. Start to walk those feet in, but keep those forearm, forearms down. And you want your arms kind of parallel like train tracks. About hip width apart, pushing out through your palms, you're gonna bring yourself into your dolphin pose. So kind of like down dog, but way more horrible. We're getting into our shoulders here and our abs. So if you don't wanna take this, you can just take your normal downward dog. That's absolutely fine. And those of you that wanna go even deeper here, you're gonna bring yourself forward, try and kiss the mat and back, forward, kiss the mat, back, you don't actually have to kiss the mat, but like you're going to, and back, and five, and you're not imagining this, this is really, really hard, four, and back, three, and back, this is really good for the shoulders, two, strengthening them, and one, lovely, draw your heels together, knees apart, and drop back into your child's pose. Setting your bum down on your heels, give yourself a little wiggle here. And if you can in your child's pose, you just wanna kind of wiggle yourself all the way to the back of the mat. Take a nice deep breath here. Gaze straight ahead between your hands and start to draw your chest along the mat, bring yourself into your extended puppy pose. So your chest is down, your sit bones up towards the sky. Feet and knees parallel like train tracks out behind you and try to make sure that you're gazing between your hands. If you want to get deeper in the stretch, you can come up on your fingertips, making your hands like little spiders. That gets deeper into your shoulders. What we're doing in the stretch is we're going to get into the hamstrings, the spine and the shoulders. Take a deep inhale. And exhale. And then gently drop the hands. And you're just going to bring yourself all the way along the mat into your sphinx pose. So sphinx, so your forearms are down on the mat just like they were in your dolphin or your forearm plank. You kind of look like one of those statues, statues in Egypt. Gaze straight ahead. And what we want here is to drop our shoulders down, neck nice and long. And to make sure that we're engaging the lower half of our body as well. So what we tend to do is kind of forget about our lower body in this stretch. So I want you to point the knees and just point the knees, point the toes, so that your knees are lifting off the mat. So when you're engaging your legs, pointing your toes, you're going to feel it in your glutes and your hamstrings and your lower back. You'll get even deeper into the stretch case. Straight ahead, inhale. This is a really nice one as well for stretching your chest and your shoulders and your abdomen 
And we're going to get even deeper into our shoulders here. You're just going to bring your right arm out to the side of your mat. So keeping it in the same position with the elbow bent. And as you do, you're going to roll onto your right side. Stack the hips on top of each other. So you'll feel your, el your shoulder starting to open. Take your left hand and you're just going to come up on your left fingertips. You can use this left arm as a kind of support. Make sure that the hips are stepped on top of each other and you're balancing on that right hip. And then start to bring the left leg behind you. And as you do, you're going to start rolling into that shoulder and opening it. You want to get deeper still. You can bring that left foot down on the mat, bending that left knee. Take a nice deep breath here. Really enjoy that feeling of your shoulder opening. If you have bad shoulders, if this really hurts, just bring yourself back to your sphinx pose. That's another really nice shoulder stretch, but it's not as intense as this one. Take a deep breath. Gently bring yourself back to center, back to your sphinx. We're gonna come through our sphinx again in the middle. Engage those legs, point the toes, lift the knees. Feel that engagement in your glutes and your hamstrings and your lower back. Take a deep breath. Take your left hand out to the side of the mat. This time, roll onto your left hip bone. Bring that right arm up, that right hand up. Balancing on your side, on your left hip. You're going to send that right leg back. I've really not left myself any room to do it. And if you want to get even deeper, bring that right foot flat on the mat. And really roll into that shoulder opening. So if you want a good shoulder stretch, this is one of the deepest ones I've ever done. I really, really like this one for opening up the shoulders. And breathe, roll into that shoulder. Be very mindful though, don't roll too far that it starts to hurt. Take one more deep breath. Gently bring yourself back to centre, into your sphinx pose. And you're going to very gently push yourself up into your cobra. Optional here, if you want to stay in sphinx, then please do. Cobra is lifting yourself a little higher. We're still not coming all the way up into our upward facing dog, but we are just getting deeper into our lower back. Push those shoulders down, engaging through the legs, point the toes. And if you want to, you can get a bit of movement here. Inhale, we start to drop the chest towards the mat. Exhale, we lift. Inhale, drop the chest. Exhale, lift. Inhale. Exhale. And if you want to, you can try this with no hands. You probably won't get as high, but it's nice to work on that strength of the spine. And lift. And lift. And lower. The movement is completely optional. Remember that. Give me one more here. And lower. And gently looking straight ahead, you're going to bring your arms out behind you. We're going to take our locust pose. So this is a really nice one for strengthening the spine, strengthening the shoulders. Gaze straight ahead. You're also strengthening your arms and your legs. So if you want to, you can just do the top half of your body. Lift your head, your neck, your shoulders, your chest and your arms. And if you want to lift your legs as well, then please do make sure those feet stay nice and aligned. You're balancing on your, those hip bones. If you're pregnant past the first trimester, please do avoid this one. Inhale, really breathe into it. Try not to hold your breath here. I don't know why, but people tend to hold their breath in these kind of poses. Give me five, four, three. Well done, two. And one, and gently dropping down left ear to the mat and gaze to the right. So this is just to release that, release the spine and the neck from that pose. And gently drop the right ear to the mat and gaze to the left. Gaze straight ahead, bring your palms in front, take a nice deep inhale, push up into your upward facing dog or your cobra, whichever you prefer. Make sure the tops of the feet are down on the mat. Exhale into your downward facing. Remembering all those things that we covered before, the shoulder rotation, the bend of the knees if you need it, the nice straight back, take a nice deep breath here. Inhale, we send our right leg all the way up behind us. Exhale, drawing that right knee in towards our chest. Placing the right foot down, we're going to come up into a lunge position. Bring those arms up in line with your ears. And sitting into that front knee bend, make sure that right ankle is underneath the right knee and that you're not sending the knee too far forward. Make sure that your hips are underneath your shoulders. Arms in line with your ears. 
sit into that front knee bend, lovely. Take a deep breath here. Turn that left foot out, bring yourself into your warrior two. Gaze down those front fingertips. Tuck that tailbone under. I am going to change sides. As usual, I'm on the wrong side. Take a nice deep breath. Start to feel yourself flow forward. Turn that right palm upwards. And then send the left arm all the way down the back of the left leg. Right arm up and over, reversing your warrior. If you're happy here, that is lovely. If you'd like to take your half spine, left arm comes around your spine to touch your right thigh and hold, inhale. And exhale, sitting into that front knee bend. Well done, looking good, everybody. Everyone that I can see on Zoom, you are looking lovely. On Facebook, I'm sure that you are also looking lovely. Give me a nice deep inhale, unravel the arms, bring yourself back to your warrior two. Keep that front knee bent, turn the palms outwards. Start to bring yourself forward and then into your triangle. Gazing up at that extended arm. Maybe you're happy here with your arms open. Maybe you wanna take it into your extended side angle where you bring your right forearm onto your right knee and your left arm comes all the way over the top. If you are opting for this one, please don't just hang out at the pub. Make sure that you're lifting up through that chest, making sure you're nice and open. If you wanna take it a step further than both of these, bring that right arm underneath your right leg, left arm over the top and take a bind, keeping that chest nice and open if you're doing that. And really, really sitting into that knee bend. Breathing here, inhale, whichever version you're in, lovely, hold. Really breathe into that opening. If you're binding, feel those shoulders opening, make sure that chest stays open. And everyone, no matter where you are, we're gonna straighten that front leg. So if you're binding, try and keep the bind. If your arms are open, you'll now be in your triangle pose. Take a nice deep breath. And if you're still binding, let go of the arms, bring yourself into your triangle. So our extended triangle pose, both legs want to be nice and straight and your hips aligned. I want you to imagine you've been popped into a toaster. So that's how you want to keep yourself nice and flat. So to make sure that we're aligning ourselves, let's take our left hand and place it on the small of our back and just push our hips into alignment. If this pose feels uncomfortable, don't worry, that probably means you're doing it right. And if your hand doesn't make it all the way down to your right ankle, that's fine. As long as you're aligned, it doesn't matter where your arms are. Stack those shoulders on top of each other. So you're trying not to bring the arm forward or back and try and gaze up at that extended arm if you can. Lovely, everybody. Take one more deep breath here. Did really you feel those hips aligning? And gently bring yourself back into an upright position, keeping those legs nice and straight. You're gonna turn that back foot in, bring your hands onto your hips and steer those hips to face the front. If you need to, you can set that back foot in slightly. Keep both legs nice and straight. Hips square to the front. We're gonna take our pyramid pose. So making sure our back stays nice and straight, we're gonna to start to hinge forward through the hips. Try and keep the legs both nice and straight, evenly distribute the weight, hinging forward, and maybe you come halfway and you're happy here. Try and make sure those hips stay even so you're not opening up on one side, back stays flat. If you want to, you can drop the hands down either on your calf, your ankle, or down onto the mat on either side of that front foot. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, start to glue the torso to the thigh. And dropping down, inhale. Really nice. And try and keep that back flat if you can. Hips aligned, try and make sure the weight is evenly distributed between those legs. So what we tend to do is dump all of our weight into the front foot and we really don't want to do that. We really feel that nice intense hamstring stretch. Take one more deep breath here wherever you are. Start to walk your hands around to the center, turn the feet outwards, wide leg forward fold. A really nice one for extending the spine, good for lower back pain. Start to hinge forward through the hips, drawing the crown of the head towards the mat. If you want to take hold of your legs, then please do. If you feel more comfortable just staying in a flat back, then please also just do that. Anyone that does have headstand in their practice that would like to take their tripod headstand at this point, then please feel free. And you can meet us back in our wide leg forward fold. Please only take headstand if you are 100% confident in your practice. Yes, well done, lovely Frankie. Well done. Really nice. Everyone else, we inhale to lengthen our spine. Exhale, trying to draw the head even closer towards the mat, making that little tripod. 
really breathe into that stretch. So feel it on the back of your hamstrings, feel it lengthening your spine. This is a really, really nice powerhouse stretch. Inhale. We're just gonna give everyone in, hand, in headstand a little minute. And I'm just gonna switch sides. And then everyone in headstand, gently bringing yourself back down onto the mat. If you need to take a child's pose, please do. And everyone, we're just walking our hands around to that right foot. Turn the right foot forward, turn both foot facing forward, bend that right knee. You're bringing yourself into a lunge position here. And you're gonna take both hands now to the inside of your right foot into your lizard pose. So if you want, you can stay here. Make sure that right knee is facing straight ahead. And if you wanna get even deeper, coming down onto your forearms and really, really prepping those hips as though you're prepping for splits. We're really opening them up here in here. And exhale. You can rock on that back foot if you'd like to try and keep that knee in line with the rest of your body so it's not opening up. Take a nice deep breath, straighten the legs, and you're gonna drop that back knee down onto the mat and to untuck your left foot. So maybe you're happy here and maybe you'd like to take a little monkey twist. So if you wanna take your monkey twist, we're gonna take our left hand and just drop it to the outside of the mat. So we're taking the mat out of the equation. Take your right arm, so it should be your bent knee arm, out in front, deep breath, circle that right arm all the way around behind you. Maybe you're happy here and maybe you want to lift that back foot, your left foot, and kick the left foot into your right hand and just sink into those hips. Really nice, everyone. Really feel that stretch. Nice hip opener. Remember this one from our splits flow. It's a really, really good one if you are prepping for splits. Really, really opening up. Take a deep breath. Wherever you are. If you're holding onto your foot, gently drop that back foot. Everyone bringing the hands down on either side of the front foot. We're gonna bend our back knee, straight our front leg, flex the right foot, inhale here. Exhale, start to glue the torso towards the thigh. Breathe and sink nice and deep into that stretch. And try again to make sure your back stays flat. So if it means that you don't go as deep into the stretch, then that's absolutely fine. This is a nice, deep, intense hamstring stretch. And if you've taken my classes before, you know I love a nice, deep hamstring stretch. I find them really indulgent. If you've ever had a hamstring injury before, you'll understand that indulgent feeling of really stretching it out. Deep inhale. And exhale. And one more time. And gently plant that right foot. Again, bring yourself back into your low lunge. Bring those arms up in line with your ears. Shoulders down and maybe you're happy here. Maybe you want to take a twist and split the arm. So we'll send our left arm forward, our right arm back. So you're twisting through the waist. If you're pregnant, please don't do this one. Take a nice deep breath. And maybe you want to come even further. Drop that right leg back onto your left calf. Left arm over the top. Get nice and deep into your spine. Whichever version you're in, give me a nice deep breath here. And circle those hands back on either side of that front foot. We're gonna drop that right leg now, drop that right knee and make the calf almost in line with the top of our mat. We're dropping into our pigeon pose. Everyone knows I love a pigeon, nice deep hip opener. So remember guys, what we want here is our hips aligned facing straight ahead. So if you do have a block, you can use the block, but everything around your house, you might find things that work. So a box, a chunky book like a dictionary, chunky kids book, an iPhone box, a packet of wet wipes, and you can pop underneath your lifted hip. And what that does is just make sure we don't sit lopsided and really, really aggravate our hips. We really don't want our hips lopsided here. You want them straight ahead like car headlights. Really feel yourself opening up those hips. Drop those shoulders down, puff that chest out like a nice proud pigeon, inhale. And maybe you're happy here, maybe you wanna to start to walk those hands forward on the mat. Maybe you wanna come down onto your forearms today. And maybe you drop the whole way down into your reclined pigeon, forehead down onto the mat, torso over your bent knee. So remember this is our active stretch path. It's our 
active rest, passive stretch. What we're doing here is kind of like a stretch pose, but we are resting. So we're kind of pushing ourselves into that hip opening as we lie and rest and breathe into it. So I want you to feel those hips melting open into the mat. Deep inhale and exhale, lovely. And inhale. And exhale. Give me one more breath. Gently start to walk those hands back into your upright pigeon. If you want to, you can stay here. If you'd like to lift that back foot, then please do. And maybe you want to take hold of that back foot with your arm. And maybe you're feeling super flexible. You want to take a bind behind your head. And whichever version you're in, just give me three breaths here. Really feel those hips opening. And if you're lifting your foot, you're going to feel this in your spine, in your hamstring. One more deep breath. Gently drop that foot. Bring your hands back in front. And we're going to take that left leg now. We're going to circle it the whole way round. And you're going to drop that left foot over your right knee. So from the front, this is what it's going to look like. Your right leg hasn't actually moved from your pigeon position. Your left leg has come all the way around and you dropped it on the outside of your right knee. Make sure those sit bones, try and keep them as even as possible on the mat. You're going to take your left arm behind you like a secondary spine. Inhale, reach your right arm up towards the sky. And as you exhale, we're just going to bring that right elbow to the outside of our left knee and just push that knee away and start to gaze over your left shoulder. So this is a really nice spinal stretch. It's really good for easing any backache that you might have. It's a stimulating stretch. It re-energizes our spine. If you are really confused and you're like, what the hell did she just say? Um, this stretch is kind of confusing to get into. So feel free to sit cross-legged and just bring your left hand, your right hand to the outside of the left knee and twist that way. If you manage to get into your half lord of the fishes, then well done. Give me one more breath here. Really, really feel that spinal twist. And remember what we say about twists. They're really good because they compress the organs, which releases all the toxins from the blood. And then we're going to let go of that twist. And what that does is allows fresh blood to flow through the organs. And just give yourself a little counter twist, so bring yourself over to the right. Gently bring yourself back to centre, take those palms in front, unwrap the legs back into your all fours position. And if you remember what we just did, we're going to do the whole thing again. Tuck those toes under. Push those sit bones up towards the sky, down we're facing down. Lovely. Take a nice deep inhale, left leg. It's going to come all the way up behind us, three-legged dog. Send that left knee forward to meet the chest and plant the left foot. I always want to say the left chest. Left ankle underneath the left knee and grounding through your back foot as well. Bring those arms up. Lunge position. And make sure that we're stacked nice and Nice and aligned, so you're bringing your shoulders above your hips, you're trying not to lean forward here. You want to tuck that tailbone under, and inhale. Really nice, take a deep breath here, sit into that front knee bend, turn that right foot out, tuck the tailbone under, arms in line with our shoulders, warrior two, sit into that front knee bend here. Lovely, dropping the shoulders down, neck long. Gorgeous, make sure that back foot's turned out. Start to lean forward, turn that left palm up. Send the right arm down the back of the right leg. Left arm up and over, reversing that warrior. Well done. Gorgeous. And if you want to take your half bind here, you're going to bring that right arm around to touch your left thigh. Well done. Sitting into that front knee bend. Lovely. Take a nice deep breath here. Unravel the arms back to your warrior two. Turn the palms outwards. Start to lean forward. Bring yourself into your triangle. Keep that front knee bent. So if you're happy here, try and gaze up at that extended arm. And if you want to go a little bit less, left forearm onto your left knee, right arm up and over, extended right angle pose. Make sure it's a straight line from the foot all the way up to your fingertips. And no hanging out at the pub. Remember, we're lifting up that chest. We're still engaging. 
And those of you that want to take your bind, left arm comes in underneath the left leg, right arm behind, open that chest, sit into that front knee bend. Really nice, everybody. Gorgeous. And breathe. And if you're in your bind, just trying to meet those fingers at the back. And everybody here, no matter where you are, we're going to straighten that front leg. So if you're in your bind, just give me a breath here. And then open those arms. And we're all meeting in our extended triangle pose. So remember, your left hand doesn't have to be in line with your left ankle. It can be up by your knee if that feels better for you. Just making sure that your alignment is correct. That's the most important thing here. Take your right hand into the small of your back and just gently push those hips into alignment. And then reach that right arm up. Make sure those shoulders are stacked on top of each other. And try and gaze up at your extended arm if you can. Breathing. If you're uncomfortable, you're probably doing it right. Remember that here. We're squashed between two panes of glass. We're popped in a toaster. Whatever visualization really helps to align those hips. Take a deep breath, pivot back into your warrior two, but keep both legs nice and straight. You're gonna bring your finger and thumb onto your hips and steer them to the front. And if you need to step that back leg in a little bit, then please do. We're coming into our pyramid pose, squaring those hips forward. Make sure that the hips are underneath the shoulders and then start to pivot forward, keeping that spine nice and straight. Keep that back nice and flat. So maybe you're happy here and maybe you want to bring those hands down onto your ankle, your calf. Maybe you want to drop them on either side of that front foot. Start to glue the torso onto the thigh. And remember to evenly distribute the weight between the feet. So you don't want to dump all of your weight on your left foot. Inhale, we lengthen. Exhale, start to fold. Really lovely, everybody. Gorgeous. And with every inhale, we lengthen, try and keep that back nice and straight. Exhale, we fold. And you might find that one side is a little bit easier to fold forward into. Feel that nice deep stretch through the back of your hamstring. Again, you know I love a hamstring stretch. Give me one more deep breath here. And just take both hands now to the inside of your left foot. Bend that left knee, step back with the right, and you're going to bring yourself into your lizard pose. So if you're happy here, make sure that left knee is facing straight ahead and not dipping out to the side. You can stay here. If you want to go a little deeper, come down onto your forearms. Try and keep those hips nice and aligned. And remember, if you want to rock on that back leg, to just really sink deeper into that hip opening. Then please do. Take a nice deep breath here and just hold, feeling those hips sinking open, lifting up through your shoulders. So just dome your shoulders here a little bit, allow them not to collapse in the center. Always rotate your shoulders to the outside. Take a deep breath, straight the arms, drop that back knee down onto the mat and untuck that right foot. So maybe you're happy here and maybe you want to take your monkey twist. So your right hand now comes to the outside of the mat. We take the mat out of the equation, taking it nice and wide. Left arm, so your bent knee arm is going to come out straight ahead. Circle that left arm all the way back. And if you want to, you can pick up the right foot and start to draw the heel in towards you, really opening up those hips. Well done, whichever version you're in, lovely. Sit into that hip opener. If you have bad knees, I really would recommend not picking up the back foot unless you've got something to pop underneath it, like a cushion. Take a nice deep breath. One more. Gently drop that back foot. Bring your hands down on either side of that front foot. We're going to bend the back knee, straight the front leg, flex the foot. Deep lunge. We're really going to get into our left hamstring now. Inhale, we lengthen, keep that spine nice and straight, and exhale, start to curve forward, curve forward. And then you're going to bring yourself forward, glue your torso onto that thigh. We don't want to curve. We don't want to be hunched back of Notre Dame. We want a nice, straight spine. Inhale. Exhale, really, really. Always drop yourself a little deeper into the stretch on the exhale, because our body relaxes a little more then. That was my knee clicking. Lovely. Inhale. 
and exhale really really get nice and deep take one more breath here wherever you are and then gently drop that left foot back down bring yourself back into your low lunge take those arms up in line with your ears well done so if you're happy here lovely stay here if you want to take your twist we'll split the arms right arm goes forward left arm goes back and then if you want to drop back left hand onto your right calf and reach back with the right arm then by all means do so inhale and exhale inhale and exhale once more and bring both hands back down either side of that front foot drop that left foot down drop the left calf so it's parallel with the top of your mat your left shin parallel with the top of the mat and someone asked me yesterday does it have to be completely parallel absolutely not um the top of the mat is just a marker so that's what you're aiming for but i mean i can't get it parallel very few people can um, the main thing here is that your hips are aligned straight ahead, like car headlights. We're not shifting our weight into one hip. You want to bring those hips nice and aligned, and that's the most important thing. We're opening our hips here. Send those shoulders down your spine, puff that chest out. Nice, proud pigeons. Nice, long neck. Sit into that hip opener. And remember, if you want to use a block or a book or whatever underneath your lifted hip, then please do really enjoy that feeling of melting open onto the mat and breathe maybe you're happy here maybe you want to start to walk your hands forward maybe you want to come down onto your forearms and maybe you want to drop the whole way down recline pigeon and breathe really really enjoying that opening in the hip so remember it's a passive stretch and active rest so though we're resting we're still opening the hip and really breathe into that pigeon. Well done, lovely. Start to walk those hands back into your upright pigeon. Maybe you're happy in your upright pigeon. Maybe you want to lift that back foot. Maybe you want to take that foot with your hand. Maybe you want to take a bind behind your head, whichever version you're in. Let's take three breaths here. Gorgeous, well done, everybody looking good. Well done. Sinking into those hips still, maybe feeling in your hamstrings and your spine. This is one of my absolute favorites. Take a nice deep breath. Gently drop that back foot down onto the mat. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that right leg, we're gonna spin it the whole way around. And you're gonna plant that right foot over the top of your left knee. I always have to really double check my lefts and rights here. So your left shin, your left leg has not moved from your pigeon position. Your right leg has come all the way around and you've planted that right foot on the outside of the left knee. So this is what it's gonna look like. Try and shift your sit bones so they're nice and even. We're gonna take our right hand behind us now, like a secondary spine. Nice and straight behind us, keeping ourselves upright. Left arm, inhale, bring it up towards the sky. Exhale, take a twist, bend the elbow. And you're gonna take that left elbow to the outside of the right knee, push that knee away. Gaze over your right shoulder and twist. Half Lord of the Fishes. If you are confused, do not worry, it is confusing. Bring yourself into a cross leg position. Bring your right arm behind and your left hand to the outside of your right knee and push. And really feel that twist. So remember, we're visualizing ourselves as a dirty dishcloth when we're twisting. We're just wringing out all of those toxins, all of the bad stuff. When we let go of the twist, we're allowing fresh water to run through us. Take a deep breath here. Gaze as far as you can behind you. Gently bring yourself back to center. Take a little counter twist bringing yourself around to the left and then bring yourself back to center on your mat you're just going to unravel your knees plant your feet down on the mat bend the knees and just give yourself 
a nice little hug. If you've done a little bit of back bending, just give yourself a little hug. Take a breath. Then sitting up, bringing your arms in line with your legs. And you're going to slowly, gently, we're going to start to peel ourselves back down onto the mat. Peel, peel, peel. Nice and slowly, one vertebra at a time, melting down. Engage the core as you go if you want a little extra ab work. Bring yourself all the way down onto the mat. Arms down by your side. Palms nice and flat. Well done. And we're just going to finish with another little twist here. So just bring the legs into a tabletop position and you're going to drop both knees over to the left and gaze to the right, reach both arms out. So we always gaze in the opposite direction of our legs just to get the maximum from the twist. Deep breath from the base of your spine all the way up to your neck. Gently bring those legs back to centre into your tabletop position and drop them over to the right, gazing to the left. And remembering what we're doing when we're twisting, compressing our organs, releasing the toxins. And when we bring ourselves back to centre, we're allowing flesh, fresh blood to flow through us. So bringing yourself back to centre and then starting to hug the knees in towards the chest and gently give yourself a little rock from side to side. Just release that spine. Well done, lovely. And then let's start to straighten out, point those fingers, point those toes. Reaching from one side of the room to the other, full body stretch. You guys know the drill by now. Imagine someone's got you by the fingers, someone's got you by the toes. They're trying to add extra inches onto your body. So you're being pulled from one side of the room to the other and you can't get away. You want to put tension into every single part of your body. That includes your face. Scrunch up those faces. Beardy eyes. Scrunch up nose. Tiny little mouth. Double chins. Make the ugliest face you've ever made in your life. Everything I've told you not to do in this class, I want you to do it. Scrunch those shoulders up. Tension everywhere. And on top of our physical tension, let's take our mental tension as well. I'm sure we've all got a lot of it right now. Let's pour it all into this stretch. We want to make a big tension bomb. We're going to let it all go. We're just going to build it up. Build it up, reaching from one side to the other. They're trying to add inches onto your body. Ugly, ugly faces, tiny, tiny eyes, screwing it up, double chins, a million chins. Reaching, 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 pour everything in. You're pissed off, we can't go out. Everyone's annoying you. Keep reaching, keep reaching. Five, four, three, two, two point five, two and nine tenths. And one, let go, bring the arms down by your side and take a nice deep breath. Let those feet fall open. Now is the time to grab a drink of water, a blanket, a cushion, a pair of socks, a jumper, whatever you need to do. Feel free to dim the lights. If you are pregnant, please make sure you take your Shavasana lying on your left hand side in a fetal position with a cushion between your knees. Everyone else, please choose however you'd like to take your shavasana, although lying on your back is really, really lovely. If you've got a very deep bend in the spine, it can sometimes help to just bend your knees slightly or pop a cushion underneath the small of your back. I'm going to come seated so that I can talk to you, but bring yourself down onto your mats. If you want to pop on a little bit of music, then please do feel free to do that as well. Closing your eyes and let's take a nice deep inhale through the nose, expand the abdomen. Send all of your air down towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling them like a glass all the way to the top. When we reach the top of our breath, gently exhaling and drawing the navel in. Just start to tune into your breath and bring you back to where you were at the beginning of the class. Drain off any little excess bits of energy and tension that you have. And just focus in on that slow and steady rise and fall of your breath. 
Checking in with those tension points. Dropping the shoulders down, away from the ears, guiding them down the spine into the mat. Creating space for your neck to grow long. Facial features soft and gentle. Jaw unlocked. Back teeth are not touching. Tongue drop down away from the roof of the mouth. We take that imaginary broom and sweep the mind completely clear, free of clutter, free of wandering thoughts and worries. And we focus only on our breath and our body. Taking your attention to your feet, feel them fall open on the mat, each toe unraveling one by one. Ankles, calves, knees and thighs switching off. Imagining someone's taken the batteries out of us. From the base of your spine all the way up to your shoulders, feel each vertebrae melt down into the mat one by one, as though someone is pressing down the keys of a piano. All the way up to your shoulders. And feel those shoulders melt down away from your ears even further. Drawing down your spine, melting into the mat like lava. Your neck is growing long, your head becoming light. Facial features soft and gentle. Jaw unlocked. Arms feather light at your side. Fingers unraveling to expose your palms to the sky. And finally, we take our attention to our chest and our abdomen. Focusing in on that slow and steady rise and fall. The rhythm that guides our body. Helps us to relax and stay calm. Breathing into our bodies, using that breath to wash through us. And exhale, release. Yogic breath can be used for anxiety and insomnia. To calm us down. So we take these moments to really be thankful for our breath and our body but still being able to take this practice together and connecting with each other every night. And knowing that we are all breathing together, let's take this moment to just focus in on that slow and steady rise and fall as we inhale and exhale. Gently start to wiggle your fingers and your toes to draw awareness back into your bodies. Draw your knees in towards your chest and give yourself a little hug and gently rocking from side to side to massage that spine on the mat. Bring yourself all the way over 
into a fetal position. And keeping your eyes closed, bring yourself up into a seated position on your mats, bringing your palms to your knees. And let's take a nice deep inhale. And on our exhale, I want you to sigh really loudly and just let everything go. <sighs> and again, inhale. <sighs> and one more time, really releasing everything. Inhale. <sighs> Blink your eyes open. Draw your palms together at your heart center. Thank you all so much for practicing with me this evening. As always, you are a complete delight and it brings me so much pleasure to flow with you every evening. I've got a list of things that you guys want to go through in the coming weeks. So we will be practicing all of the things that you've suggested. Apart from the guy that wanted to do peacock pose, we're not going to do that, I'm afraid. I, I cannot do it and I'm scared to teach it. Um, but... If if you do have any other suggestions, feel free to pop them on Zoom or on Facebook in the comments. And otherwise, have a lovely rest of your evening. Stay safe.